Hey YouTube, New York half Fast Prepper here. It's been a while since I made a video. It's because the warm weather's here. And uh, instead of work, and I've been busy doing other warm weather stuff. But anyway, today we're looking at a what I consider to be an underrated revolver. Uh, this revolver is 357 Magnum, chambered in. And this is a Ruger Police Service 6. Uh, it's very similar to the... Um, Security 6, uh, but they made two variations of the Security 6, and one of them was the Police Service 6, and the difference is that it has fixed sights. I'll hold this up like this. A set of fixed sights on the top instead of the adjustable target sights on the Ruger Security 6. And then the other variation was the Speed 6, which had a rounded uh, frame on the bottom. Um... This was Ruger's attempt back in the early 70s to compete with the uh, Colts and the Smiths. Uh, they were getting all the business, all the police departments in the country. Any agency that was armed was was uh, was buying Colts and Smiths. In fact, when my father went on the NYPD back in 1964, basically you had a choice back then, Colt or Smith & Wesson. And my father was a Colt guy. Somebody got to him, got to him and said, uh, buy a Colt. And he's been a Colt man ever since. Um... So Ruger came out with this to compete with that, and it was it was mildly successful. Few few agencies bought them, mostly some some federal agencies, uh, Border Patrol and Post Office, and some of these other armed outfits. Uh, but it's a virtually indestructible revolver. Uh, they did come blued, and they did come with uh, shorter and longer barrels, I believe. Uh, the shorter barrels are more sought after than than this four inch example. Uh, I do not know. If these Packmeyer presentation grips are original to this revolver, but I do have some wood grips to put on it, but I, I actually like these better. And uh, this particular example dates back to 1976. And if you look on the side of this revolver here, it has an engraving made in the 200th year of our liberty, uh, which would have been of, of 200th year of American liberty, which was in 1976. Um, and other gun makers had uh, the Centennials or whatever, Bicentennial uh, firearms. But Ruger stamped so many of these that it doesn't make it worth any more money or anything. I just, I didn't even know that that was on there until I got it in my hands. I think it's pretty cool. But uh, And then they made so many of them that a lot of the 200th anniversary stuff that was stamped didn't even make it out of the factory until 1977. So without, you know, getting a hold of Ruger, I really don't know when this was actually shipped exactly. 76 is close enough. All right, what else can I tell you about it? Oh, there's a, a, there's a couple of interesting features about this revolver. It's an absolutely brilliant design in that this entire firearm can be taken apart down to the component level uh, without tools. You basically you pop this pin out, and this whole trigger assembly will pop out, and there's no excuse for having a dirty one of these because you can get to everything once you pop this thing out. So in that respect, it's an absolutely brilliant design. Um, and the other cool thing about this is they make a little spring kit that you can buy. I'm not sure if it's market or aftermarket, but you can lighten up the trigger on this without being a gunsmith and without having to do hand filing and fitting and cutting springs. You just pop the spring in there, which is very unusual for a revolver. I mean, a lot, lots of Glocks and, and other newer firearms have those kind of features, but back in... In the 70s, that was revolutionary. You usually have to go to a gunsmith to have work like that done. So that was kind of neat. And uh, the best part about this is you could pick these up cheap. These will never break, never rust. They will always work. They're 100% reliable. I would trust my life with this 40-year-old uh, firearm any day of the week. Uh, and you could pick these up for $300 or less in a lot of places. So they're, uh, they're very cheap. But what it's not is a Smith & Wesson or a Colt. But if you're looking for a good utility revolver that will last you the rest of your life and shoot fi with fine accuracy and very easy to clean, this is an, uh, an excellent revolver for you. So that's it. This is the latest in the showcase. I don't want to uh, go all Smith and Colt on you guys, uh, so I figured I'd uh, mix it up and throw a Ruger in here. And uh, that's it. I'm out.